Hey everyone, welcome back to Plant-Based Kidney Health. Michelle and Dr. Hashmi here. Uh, my question for you, Dr. Hashmi, is, you know, we've talked about polycystic kidney disease, but people have questions on what other types of cysts can people have um, related to their kidneys? And then is that does that cause kidney disease or how does that harm the kidneys and can we prevent those other types of cysts? So, so kidney cyst, I think this is an important question because we've gotten so many messages about this question going on. So when you first look at kidney cysts, remember there's two big categories. There's genetic and then there's non-genetic. And there's a ton of different causes that can cause cysts to occur. There's things like medullary sponge kidney. Of course, there's polycystic kidney disease, autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive going on. There's autosomal dominant interstitial kidney disease. There's von Hippel-Lindau. There's tuberous sclerosis. There's uh, nephronoptosis going on. And so, so many different causes of cysts going on. And certainly, if you have a lot of cysts, then we need to do our entire workup to see what's going on. But when you just start with the idea of having cysts, there are two basic things that we divide cysts into. We call them either simple or complex. This is really, really important. And the reason it's so important is if your doctor says, Mrs. Jones, you have a simple cyst, that means that there's really not much to worry about. They don't have to do any surveillance going on and it is what it is. It's just going to stay there. Simple cyst can be large sometimes. And so sometimes because they're causing pain, they might have to stick a needle in and drain it. But 90 plus percent of the time, there's nothing to do for a simple cyst. Now, here's the thing that nobody wants to hear. That is, unfortunately, cysts increase in the kidneys with age. It just is. And more often than not, people over the age of 50 almost always have simple cyst. In fact, every time somebody does a CT scan for belly pain or something else going on, it's very, very common that they find a cyst and they get really worried and they'll come talk to me about it in terms of what's going on. So when you need to understand if it's simple or if it's complex, if it's simple, it's actually very easy to be able to look at that on an ultrasound and show that because the criteria is very clear and you really don't need follow-up. Of course, a CT will give you better resolution and you can tell that. When you get to complex, complex is divided into four categories. It's Bosniak 1, Bosniak 2. There's a Bosniak 2F where people are like, well, we didn't really want to call it Bosniak 3, so we'll call it 2F, which is between 2 and 3. So it's Bosniak 1, Bosniak 2, Bosniak 2F, Bosniak 3, and Bosniak 4. Now, in order to classify which Bosniak category it is, you actually cannot do that so well on an ultrasound. You really need a dedicated CT with contrast to be able to tell which Bosniak classification it is. And why do you care so much? The reason you care is because the follow-up is so different from Bosniak 1 to 4. So when you look at a CT scan and you're looking at Bosniak 1, what your radiologist and your nephrologist and your urologist will tell you is, yeah, the walls are really thin. It doesn't really enhance, so it's Bosniak 1. Bosniak 2, they might see a line or a very thin, faint line going through the cyst, so that's Bosniak 2. Bosniak 2F, they might see more than just one line, multiple very, very thin lines that are going through it. But Bosniak 3 is where you start to see that on a CT, it starts to light up a little bit, and those little hair-like lines are much thicker. And in Bosniak 4, you see that the tissues next to those cysts are also starting to light up a little bit. So nobody needs to understand all of these anatomy and pathology and so forth, but the question is, why go through all these criteria? Because Bosniak 1 and 2 we don't really do anything. You don't need further imaging. You don't need to do follow-ups. You just say, look, Mrs. Smith, you have Bosniak 1 or you have Bosniak 2. There's nothing to be concerned about. That's it. But if it's a Bosniak 2F, remember Bosniak 2F is between 2 and 3, what we then say is, is we need to document that it's stable. How do we do that? Generally speaking, we will do serial ultrasounds about every six months for a couple of years to make sure they are 
stable going on. So if it looks like it's enlarging or the septa are getting thicker or something else going on, then we need to talk to a urologist and it might actually become a Bosniac 3. So a Bosniac 3 and Bosniac 4, that's where it's no longer the nephrologist. That's where we would send you to the urologist and they will do a few things. They might just say, look, it's Bosniac 3, but you know, it looks like it's stable. We're going to follow it. Or now it's Bosniac 3 and we are concerned about it because there's some concerning features. So we're going to talk about surgery, which means they might do a partial nephrectomy or take a piece of the kidney with the cyst out. Or if it's too high risk to do that, they might do an ablation, which means they're basically just kind of wiping that portion and killing that portion out. Now, when you're talking about Bosniac 3 and 4, that's where you really want to make sure that you are focusing on getting an MRI instead of a CT. So we started with ultrasounds. Ultrasounds can tell you if it's simple. Then we went to CT scans with contrast to be able to classify Bosniac. And now if it's Bosniac 3 or 4, we're going to do MRI so that we can look at the septations a lot better on the MRI going on. So that's your classification of simple versus complex cyst. For genetic workup, we end up doing that to figure out, you know, if there's a lot of cyst occurring, your family had cyst, if you, God forbid, members of your family went on dialysis because of cystic disease, that's all workup. But the most important question that everybody wants to know is, can cyst be prevented? No. You cannot, and there's no diet or anything like that that we know about. There's not a single shred of evidence that eating, you know, dirt from the ground or anything like that is going to make a difference. So simple cysts, unfortunately, they do happen with age. The recommendations are still the same, which is keep your blood pressure well, right? Stay hydrated in terms of making sure you're drinking liquids, your sugars are well controlled, your weight is well controlled, you're eating mostly plants going on. All those things are still important. I feel they probably have a role in helping to reduce the number of cysts, but I don't have a shred of evidence. And on this channel, I've always presented data to back up what I say. So the answer is simple cysts, they cannot be prevented. And after age 50, you're very likely to see them on an ultrasound. Can either the simple or complex cysts cause um, like kidney disease or kidney damage, I guess, are there, if you come in, someone has simple or complex cysts and they're doing this further imaging, are they also doing, um, you know, lab work and renal panel and things like that to monitor kidney function? So it's with simple cysts, you know, it's very rare that you will ever see anything like that, but you know, a cyst is a fluid filled structure and it's compressing on the structures around it. So if you think about polycystic kidney disease, you have all of these cysts and what are they doing? They're essentially taking over and destroying all the kidney architecture that's right next to them. So from that perspective going on, you do track kidney numbers going on. And this is now in the realm of multiple cysts. But you know, if you have a cyst that we're concerned about, nine out of 10 times, if it's just a single cyst, that's not really going to start to affect the kidneys that much going on because you really need to knock out a bunch of the kidney tissue to be able to start to see elevations in the creatinine. Okay. Got it. That makes sense. And then actually one more question, because you mentioned the, for some of the further testing and imaging needing the IV, the contrast dye. Um, And I feel like a lot of times then we're asked, well, okay, can the IV contrast dye affect the kidneys? And so I assume the, the pro of finding out exactly what type of complex cyst it is outweighs the potential downside of the contrast dye. Yeah. So contrast dye, you know, there's a lot of discussion about it. You know, technology has gotten so much better. Essentially what used to happen with the older dyes is there was a lot of vasoconstriction. So you would reduce the blood supply going to the kidneys. And of course that would lead to the risk of acute kidney injury. Now things have gotten a lot better. We still look at the risk criteria. We have formulas to be able to estimate what is your risk of renal failure with dye based on what your current kidney function is like. So all of those things do make it better. But if we see on an ultrasound that there's concerning features, we really want to know because we also want to know, God forbid, if it looks like it's a solid mass, 
not a liquid filled structure, but a solid mass. Right. We need to understand that because that could be cancer. So all of these things, the cyst, they have a potential to convert to cancer. And that's the ultimate thing we want to avoid. And that's why on Bosniak 3 and 4, when they end up doing surgery, for example, surgery is the preferred method. And if somebody's too high risk, then they'll go into ablation. But they really want to focus on surgery, a partial surgery, but a surgery nonetheless, because of the fact that if it's cancer, they don't want to leave a single cancer cell in there. So you've got to get proper imaging to know exactly what your criteria is. Okay. Got it. That's all the questions I have. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, thanks so much for watching this episode. And as always, please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. And then uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.